Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking all about periods. I'm a little nervous, but also really excited to film this video. I'm just going to be sharing with you like my period story and also things that I have found to be really helpful for me during my period, whether it be like products or just like self-care tips and that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited about this. So without further ado, let's just get into this video. I have little chip with me, whom I love, and some tea, of course. <laughs> and then also I'm wearing this sweater, which is from Airy, that just says, be confident on it. And I just thought this was a perfect sweater for me to wear for this video. I am just feeling, I don't even know how to describe it, I'm just feeling nice and warm inside. <laughs> so let's just get started. So I want to start off with talking about something that kind of um, inspired me to do this video. I've actually talked about this a couple of times in the last week or so, but it is the Let There Be Lose podcast. And oh my gosh, I just, this podcast has completely changed my outlook on my period, my outlook on my cycle. I feel like almost like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders just by listening to this podcast, which I know might sound crazy to some of you if you've never heard it before, but Trust me, there are things in this podcast that are going to resonate with everyone. So it's hosted by Linda, or Lose Warrior, which is her handle name, and she is just so knowledgeable and just so amazing to listen to. It's really hard to describe it, but like whenever I turn on one of her podcasts, I just feel instantly like at peace, and I feel like I can take on the world. <laughs> So the first series on the podcast is all about the moon cycle and this is what she refers to um, when she talks about like the menstrual cycle because she says, you know, the menstrual cycle is actually really related to the moon cycle um, with full moons, new moons, and she talks, you know, more about that in the podcast. It's kind of hard for me to say it because I feel like I'm not going to do it justice like in the slightest, but she just talks about how you know, we should always view our cycles as being beautiful and empowering and, like, just powerful. Every woman should listen to this podcast. It also dives a lot more into, like, spirituality as well and talks about, like, your intuition, which I found really helpful because, you know, I've always talked about, like, my gut feeling. And to me, gut feeling never really encapsulated how I feel when I feel like my body and my brain are speaking to me, you know? But intuition just makes so much more sense. And she talks about how the more you listen to your intuition, the more benefits, like the more it will benefit you. I don't know, it just feels very like reassuring. Like if something in you is telling you something, listen to it. It's not just there for no reason, you know? So I'm gonna have a link to Linda's podcast in the description box. I actually had a really nice little Instagram messaging session with her this morning because I put up on my story um, that I've been loving the podcast and she like instantly messaged me back and said like, thank you so much. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I felt like I needed to message her and I was like, Linda, I love you so much. And I kind of gave her, you know, like told her how obsessed I am really with the podcast. And she and I just had this great chat and she was like, welcome to the tribe. And I was like, thank you, because I now look forward so much to when she uploads podcasts. And I love how she does that when she feels like uploading it, you know, like she doesn't upload just to upload, I guess that's what I mean. Like, she doesn't have a specific schedule, she just likes to produce content when she feels empowered and she feels like, I guess like her intuition is telling her to, which I think is amazing. So definitely check out this podcast. Believe me, it will change your whole outlook on your cycle and even just her talking about like, I guess like the different phases of the cycle, I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. So yes, I love that podcast. So now I think we should kind of dive into my period story. So I actually got my period when I was 14, which is kind of older to get your period. Um, and I got it in the Universal Studios amusement park. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I remember this day being like any other day. Basically, I didn't feel any different and didn't feel like, you know, my body was telling me like, this is the day, you know? And the whole idea of a period for me, I felt like it was just like the farthest thing from my mind, you know? Like I had just stopped thinking about it because 
I had not experienced anything to do with it at all. And my friends and I honestly just didn't even talk about periods. Like it just wasn't a thing. Now we talk about periods like every single time we get together. There's at least one or two conversations about our periods. Which I think it's kind of amazing, you know? But yeah, so I just wasn't really thinking about it. I honestly kind of felt like it will never happen, <laughs> which obviously that's not true, but I just didn't even think about it, didn't even want to think about it. So when I first got my period, it was almost like, is this actually happening? Because it was so light. And I came out of the bathroom and I'm like, mom, I think I got my period. And she was like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, but like, I don't know. <laughs> like, it wasn't like a for sure, like blood, red color or anything it was just like very 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 light so that's kind of like how it all started that really kind of triggered like a change in my body and i had no idea what i was in for i guess you could say because in that same year i started experiencing splitting migraine headaches and it was like nothing i'd ever experienced before and I missed a lot of my ninth grade year because I could not even be in a classroom. Like, they were so bad. Um, we went to so many doctors. It was a very frustrating time for my family because I had been raised, you know, my grandpa was a doctor. So we were very, I guess, like, used to the medical system here in Canada. And so it was like... You know, it was hard to hear that there was nothing that could really be done. And I feel like for the first like month or two of that, we just had no clue what was going on because there was nobody in my family who had like, you know, history of migraines, which was like, so why is this happening to me, you know? So after a couple months of having this, my doctor said to me, she's like, you know, really, I think this might just be your body changing. This might just be, you know, you going through the changes happening. Um, and it sucks, but this is like, this is what I think it is. And now that I look back at it, it makes so much more sense to me. I very rarely these days get the same intensity of migraines as I did back then, but I just remember it being horrible and I'd never gotten headaches before then. So it was crazy. Anyway, <laughs> so that's the beginning of my period. Flash forward about a year, I started getting a lot of pain in my abdomen. It was, again, really bad. I ended up missing a lot of school for it. And I didn't know what it was until I, you know, was told this is what cramps feel like. This is how cramps are. So, again, going to tons of doctors, trying to see what I could do. And really, again, my doctor just told me like, this is again, like your body changing. I had a lot of people telling me like, you shouldn't feel like this. This shouldn't be happening. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff, like this shouldn't be so bad. And that was really rough. I'm not gonna lie. Somebody telling you that you shouldn't be feeling a certain way is really scary. And that's something that I will never be telling people, to be honest, because it's like, <laughs> So what do you want me to do about it? Like, I I'm sorry, but this is what's happening to my body. And um, it was like they thought I was controlling it. <laughs> I personally think that everybody during, you know, this change in their bodies, during their periods and their cycles, everybody has different symptoms, has different feelings, has just a different experience. Like nobody is the same in their period experience. That's why I feel like the whole idea of you shouldn't be feeling like this is really just not applicable to periods. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it right now. That's my whole story. It was a lot for my body to handle and it's not a time in my life that I look to go back to at any time. It was pretty hard and it was hard on me. It was hard on my parents too because they were just, you know, seeing your kid in pain can't be easy. Um, and they were just trying to figure out how to fix this, how to fix it. And there was just no way, you know? Now I've kind of found ways to help deal with my headaches, deal with my cramps, but they are nowhere near what they used to be. Nowhere near. So yeah, Whew. it's a little deep. It's very deep. <laughs> Need a cup of tea after that one. Now I think we're going to talk about what products I love using while I'm on my period, what things I like to do for myself when I'm on my period. Even like throughout my cycle, I've learned that's important to take care of yourself whether you're on your period or you're not on your period. Self-care is so important and I think it's like a really big theme for 2018, which I'm really loving. The whole idea of it's okay to not be okay, that really resonates with me because 
you know, I, th I feel like we always put on this exterior that we're 100% happy all the time. The important thing to know is that is not true. Like, everybody goes through their shiz. So I think it's important to remember that wherever you are in your cycle, that you shouldn't be afraid of the way you feel. You should just find a way to take care of yourself and don't just tell yourself you shouldn't be feeling the way you feel because obviously that isn't true. So, okay. <laughs> I don't know if symptoms is the right word, but we're just gonna stick with that because I can't really think of another one at this moment. Symptoms, though, will always change throughout people's period cycles. Um, that's what I've learned because even in just like the six years I've had my period, things have changed so much for me. They always start for me about a week and a half before I'm supposed to get my period, but let's be honest, I don't have a regular cycle. Like, my cycle is changing all the time. I usually only get pretty bad cramps for one or two days now which I'm so happy, that's all, <laughs> because I used to get them for so much longer than that. So for my cramps, I always have my heating pad. I feel like a heating pad is something that everyone needs. If you experience any kind of cramping, it's necessary. This one I actually just got because I, the one I was using before was actually my mom's. So it was probably a fire hazard, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but it died, so I got a new one. This is a king size, and it's by, I think it's Sunbeam. Yeah, Sunbeam. There are tons of different heat temperatures on here, but the main thing I love about it is it goes off after two hours, so if you forget to unplug it, you don't have to worry about it too much. But also what I love about this heating pad is how fast it heats up. Oh, like my other one used to take yeah, I would say like 10 minutes to get like at full heat. This one literally starts heating up, I would say like after like maybe 30 seconds. So I love it. <laughs> Needless to say, I love this one. My mom got this one for me at London Drugs. So thank you, Madre. But yeah, it's amazing. I'm not gonna talk about like medications or anything because I feel like painkillers and that kind of stuff are very personal, whether you wanna take them or not. Like sometimes I take them, sometimes I don't take them. It's you know, I'm not ever really consistent with it, so I think that's something that if you really want to figure that out for yourself, you can talk to your doctor. That's just, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm just gonna say about that. Something that also really helps me with like crampage is making sure I have a good number two. <laughs> yes, you have to talk about poop on my channel, but it's okay. I learned again very early on that being constipated really is not good when you're on your period because it can make the pain so much worse. And also my dad's read a lot about how it like it builds up the estrogen in your system and it makes it worse and all this stuff. He's done a ton of research on it, which is super cool, but I'm not gonna talk about vitamins or anything in this video because I haven't like found something that I know works for me. I'm just kind of trying things here and there, you know? But I do know that keeping a regular is important. This is just Restorelax. <laughs> you can get it at Safeway, um, Costco. Of course, that's where I get mine because, you know, <laughs> why not? I just mix this with juice and I just drink that and within, I would say, like a day or less, I've gone. So, depends on like, you know, how much you have going on in there, but it really, really makes a difference for me. And I feel like especially if you have a lot of pain on one side, I would make sure you're not constipated because that could really be affecting it. So, yes. <laughs> so talk a bit more about migraines. I don't actually get a lot of migraines surrounding my period anymore. I might get one every like couple of months. But really for me, like these days in particular, my migraines are usually triggered by like schnooks, changes in the weather, um, eating spicy foods, uh, being in like a super hot area, that kind of stuff. Everybody has different triggers when it comes to headaches and migraines and stuff. Migraines though especially, it's usually weather change for me and the other ones tend to be just more like headaches. But yeah, I would definitely maybe keep a journal or you know, just write down whenever you have a headache or a migraine and think about like, did I do anything different today? Like, you know what I mean? Like kind of keeping track of it because then you might be able to just pick out like, hey, these things are in common. Like, it really, really helps. Thank goodness for me that chocolate is not a trigger for me <sighs> because that would have been a travesty. <laughs> Another thing I noticed that I've been getting more and more of when I have my period or around my period is my boobs really ache and they just feel like almost kind of like puffy and just kind of like 
I don't know if swollen, I don't know if swollen's the right word, but they just don't feel the same way they do the rest of the time of the month. Right now, especially I'm kind of experiencing that and I'm just like really not wanting to wear a bra, but I'm not quite comfortable to go on camera braless yet. I'm just not quite there. But I want to share with you um, a couple of different bras that I do like to wear during my period. Usually when I'm at home, I just won't even wear one. <laughs> but if I'm in a situation where I have to wear one and I just don't really want anything that's going to be like super tight or anything with underwire, I'll go for one of these. Another great thing that I like to do um, when I feel like I have a lot of pain is I sometimes just like put my heating pad and it really just helps to... I don't even know, just like soothe? It's kind of hard to explain, but if you experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. So the bras that I love are all bralettes. Um, this first one is actually from Garage. And the only thing about Garage's bralettes, they're not very consistent with like their style types or anything. So I have not seen any like this since I bought this one. But you can get one similar to this, like Urban Outfitters. I think Aerie has a few now. So it's a lot easier to find these than when I was looking for them, I guess. But this one's just like cotton, you know, it just has an elastic band around um, here. And I, I just really like this one. It's just really nice. Like, I feel really comfortable when wearing it. And yeah, so I love that one. And the other two I have are from Aerie. This one I really, really love. I mean, I love the color of it. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> it's kind of like what I would say like a brassiere looks like in the way that it has kind of like a triangle almost shape but it still has coverage, and on the inside what I like is there is cotton, so you don't feel like, you know, there's no itchy lace going on in that area. I also like how you just feel really supported in there, and you also have like a nice back to it. It's really pretty and decorative, but I also just feel really comfortable with this, and I even like wear this to sleep in a lot too, because sometimes, you know, you just need to wear a bra with what you're going to bed in, which I know is like so ridiculous, but it just happens, you know? Like, I live with my parents. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I don't live alone, so, yeah, but, um, yeah, I love this one. And the other one I have is, again, like, I know I'm not, it's not all about the color, but I really like the color. Um, and what I like about this one, too, is it kind of has a different hem, so it kind of comes up a little bit, let me see if I can flip it, um, in the front there, so you don't have to worry about it, like, digging in anywhere. This is also, like, really nice, very thin thin lace um, and it's like really soft and stretchy which I dig. Also I love how the straps are a little bit chunkier on this one so you just feel it more supported and also the shape of the cups and or not the cups but like the front I guess. <laughs> it's just really nice so yeah those are like my favorite ones at the moment but let me know in the comments if you have any like bralette bra recommendations because I love buying bralettes and bras let's be real. Those are a couple things that I love to use when I'm feeling like the boobs are just not having a good time. <laughs> so now we're going to talk a little bit about like activities I do for myself when I'm on my period or like experiencing some just not great times, you know? One of my favorite things to do is to just relax in my bed. <laughs> my bed is like my happy place. It's my safe place and I just love laying on my bed not even under the covers, like just laying on the bed <laughs> and watching some TV, sitting with my heating pad. I also love sitting with my dog too. Like she always loves to cuddle with me when I'm sitting on my bed, which I just love. And I think part of the reason I like it so much is it is like something that I heard Linda talk about. And it's like, you know, the idea of that feeling when you're in your mother's womb. I feel like that's maybe one of the reasons I love cuddling with my dog so much because I feel like I'm I don't know, just like safe, I am warm, I'm happy, <laughs> I'm loved, you know. I also, of course, love watching TV, but I love watching TV all the time. But mainly when I'm on my period, I love to watch TV because it kind of takes my mind off of it and allows me to really relax and just like go somewhere else. I think kind of attaching onto that is time to myself is really important. I just love being on my own. I mean, sometimes it's just, it's doing work, but sometimes it's just, being able to just have some time and listen to a podcast or read a book or watch YouTube videos or whatever it may be. Time to yourself is really important, at least to me especially. I'm a Cancer in um, star signs, so if you know anything about Cancers, my friend Dana has told me that like 
it's all about like being under the covers, like, <laughs> you know, being safe and like comfortable in your own space. And that's totally me. Another thing I love doing when I need some time on my own is taking a bath. I just love like running a hot bath, putting a lush bath bomb in there, or some bubbles or something. I love that. And I just relax. I, you know, will put on some kind of TV or music or whatever and just have some time to myself and just feel like nice and warm and happy. Sometimes I'll go through like my full pamper routine where I like exfoliate my body, I shave my legs, like the whole thing. Or sometimes I just go to the bath. <laughs> it really depends on what I'm feeling. So the last thing I want to talk about is like feminine care products. The reason I haven't really talked about it very much in this video is because personally I just don't have a certain feminine care product that I'm like obsessed with. What I do now is I use tampons throughout the day or panty liners depending on like, you know, my flow. And then I'll use pads overnight. Um, that's usually what happens with me. But to be honest, I'm not picky. Like, I am not against using pads in the daytime. I'm not, <laughs> you know, so set in my ways that I wouldn't change. There are so many different like feminine care products on the market right now. That's kind of so overwhelming for me that I just haven't tried anything new. But I just really want to say, whatever you want to use, you got to use it. Like Linda also talked about this, is your intuition will tell you what you should be using. And that's just what I listen to now too. Because I don't think we should live in a world where people shame each other for whatever they use feminine care wise. So you guys, that's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you got to the end, whoa, you are a true, true go-getter sister. <laughs> I love ya. I just thought it was so needed for me to do a video like this. I was thinking about doing like a travel tips video or like a self-care video. I just had this overwhelming feeling of you need to film a period video and that was my intuition so I did it. Anyway I love you guys so much and I will see you on Sunday. Bye!